Marriage is amazing. It is. I remember when we first got married, I used to tell everyone, marriage is like having a slumber party every single night with your best friend. Why didn't anyone tell us it was this joyful? Well, that's what we're here to share with you. And we're going to provide four ways that our marriage has been joyful. And we hope that can benefit you as well. Yes. And we've been married for five years. We have two children in heaven and two on earth. And really all the content we have here can benefit anyone. And before we get started, I know there's a lot of fear when it comes to marriage. But as St. John Paul so wisely said, be not afraid. Mm. Marriage is a great gift that we can embark upon. The first way to have a joyful marriage is through prayer. Something Amory and I do each day to start our morning off right is say a morning offering. Yes. And this is basically where we offer all of our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of that day We give to our Christ. whole day to God. <laughs> yes, so it's all the prayer. So everything yes. we do from changing diapers to doing the dishes to doing the laundry from going to, to go work, to work yes. <laughs> everything it is a prayer yeah so it's really powerful something we added at the end mm -hmm. was one time we had an argument you know like sometimes couples have you know. arguments <laughs> <laughs> they're healthy arguments <laughs> yes they are and the next morning at the end of our morning offering i said for me to love Anne Marie so much more today mm. than i did yesterday yeah which meant Anne Marie had to say had to swallow some pride and say for me to love ray so much more today than i did yesterday and so we've actually grown in the habit of saying it daily and yes. it's been really beautiful and very impactful and it may seem and like just silly at first but it is awesome and a game changer so because I, we want to love each other more and more each day we do because our goal is to get each to other heaven. to heaven so how do we get to heaven? We love. That's right. So we love better and better. And then yep. one day, hopefully we're saints. <laughs> Absolutely. So try it and I hope it helps. <laughs> I know it will help. <laughs> and then also praying for your spouse. So whether it's at, while they're at work or growing in their prayer life, so often, you know, one spouse is stronger than another in their prayer life. And so really just praying for them to have, you know, the, the desire for yes. God, the desire for the time in prayer. So whatever it is, a virtue, you know, anything, just be, be very intentional, whether you're at mass, offering it up for them. Um, just give it to, give them to God, you know, like our, we, we want God to be our center in our marriage. And so praying for each other is so essential. Something like, especially when Amber was pregnant, I prayed, I offered mm -hmm. up a lot of masses for her pregnancy and it brought yeah, her so much peace through did. that. Prayer yeah. is so powerful. So we got to pray for our spouses. That's mm -hmm. something I think we can easily forget to do. We pray for you know, so many all of our things. friends and family, mm -hmm. but we yeah. forget the most, most important, important. Thing. Yes. So the next thing we need to pray for is humility. This yes. is big for, I think everyone, mm -hmm. right? But in order to have, I think a, a really, a really generous marriage, you have to mm -hmm. be humble. You know, yeah. there has to be times where you just like suck up your pride mm, and uh, especially for you men, right? Because <laughs> Right? Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and died mm -hmm. for her. So we just need to take it up. And when things are not going well and <laughs> your spouse might be getting on your nerves, <laughs> be like St. Joseph and zip the lip, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's it's very powerful. Um, mm -hmm. So praying for humility is, is really necessary because yeah. it allows us to forgive Absolutely. In, a, in an even better way. It opens the doors to so many, um, just so much freedom. Something Ray does that I love is he leads our family in prayer. And so we say a nighttime rosary with the babies just because they're 11 months old and it's just a good routine that we're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he blesses us with holy water every night. And I think that is so powerful. It helps prevent us have nightmares. <laughs> and, uh, it's really a great thing. You know, men, be the spiritual leader in the family, mm -hmm. right? We've all heard the statistic where if, if husbands are active in their faith, their mm -hmm. children will you know, grow up in that faith. Yes. And this is so necessary today for men yes. to be the leaders. And Amory, I mean, it was really cool how Amory brought that up because yeah. I think deep down, all women want their men to oh, lead in prayer. Yes, right? we do. We're the priests of our mm -hmm. household. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something for us to do. Another thing yeah. that uh, was brought on by Exodus 90 was silent prayer. This so, is a big one. Uh, something we try to do every day is have like, five to 10 minutes mm -hmm. of silent prayer together. Yes. And you know, God speaks in that silence. So to be there mm -hmm. together in silent prayer is just powerful. It is. There and are things we've yeah. never thought we'd hear that we heard. Absolutely. And it's hard to do. And it's taken us some time to get into the habit, but it is so beautiful. And it's really a bonding you know, time just yes. to be in silence with 
calling upon God. We say, come Holy Spirit. And guardian angels guide us. <laughs> Absolutely. We always call on them too, just to help us, to, you know, from distractions and everything and to really allow us to hear the voice of Christ in our, in our hearts and in our minds. Um, and even if we don't at that time, we just know that Christ is filling our, our, our prayer tank, I guess yes, you could say, our God tank. <laughs> That's awesome. So if we want to be Christians and mirror Christ, we need to pray as Christ did. Mm -hmm. The second way to have a joy-filled marriage is to frequent the sacraments. My grandparents used to lead marriage encounter weekends, and they always remind me that marriage is the sacrament, not the children. So what does this mean? Very often it's easy for us to prioritize our children, and then we kind of forget about our spouse, who is the most important. <laughs> and so and so really it's like taking time, you know, each week, each month to go on dates, to talk to each other, to go deeper, uh, you know, not just about the children, but about each other. How are you doing? You know, and um, just really focusing on, on the sacrament. And Because if, if the kids see that you're in love, they'll mm -hmm. say, wow, I want to marry like that right you know it's, it's kind of like this cycle yes. um, and I think that's probably what a lot of our grandparents saw from their parents mm -hmm. you well know, it's like, like the proper order of exactly things. yeah so We're it's God trying... first you know spouse second children family friends yes and how do we love each other best by receiving the Eucharist mm. right the Eucharist the source and summit of our faith receiving God himself yeah so obviously go to mass every Sunday but mm -hmm. I would recommend something we try to do is, is go during the week. So mm -hmm. whether that's um, you go one night and your spouse stays home and watches the kids and then you alternate yeah. or you could all go together. Sometimes that's a challenge depending on your family size and <laughs> age of children, you know, yes. as their toddlers are running around the church right. and stuff. But it is the most powerful prayer. It is. It's so important. So mm -hmm. do your best to do that. Something else is that we have an amazing sacrament, confession, yes. right? So us as Catholics have this blessing because marriage is all about conflict resolution and, and things like that. So communication, yes, forgiveness, forgiveness. <laughs> I'm sure you know, you're like, yeah, forgiveness. <laughs> but something we do, which I've never heard anyone else do. Me either, so no. Get your notepad out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we do our examination of conscience together. After we take some silent time, we then ask each other, how did I do this month? Like, how did I love you? How did I fail you? How can I be better? And it's hard at first because, you, you know, we don't want to hear that, you know. No. But at the same time, who is supposed to be our closest mm -hmm. companion? Right. Our spouse. Who knows us the best? One. Right. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, you know, it's, it's really great. Over the years, we've gotten better and loved yeah. each other better. Grown in humility by doing this. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's, it's cool yeah. to go to confession and be like, wow, we did mm. really, really good this mm -hmm. month. So yeah. that's a great blessing. And Confession also allows us to forgive others yes. in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of relationships are torn apart because one of the spouses can't forgive the other. Right. And uh, we're blessed to be forgiven by God so yes. we can forgive others. Absolutely. The third way to have a joyful marriage is to be intentional each day. Every day when you wake up, you can have a profound impact on the people in your life. In marriage, it's your spouse, right? Yes. So I can choose to wake up and give my wife a kiss and be <laughs> loving, or I can choose to be frustrated that I had to wake up at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> to bring the boys in to breastfeed, to right. be breastfed. Yeah. Or Anne-Marie can be upset that she mm -hmm. had to breastfeed the boys in the middle of the night, you know? Right. It's all how we choose to act. I think it's that remembering that love is sacrificed, you know? And it's just like, so when you wake up and you're feeling, you know, not on the top of your A game, but just like, okay, I'm gonna take this for what it is and I'm gonna smile even though I don't want to and I'm gonna fake it till I make it. <laughs> exactly, so something Anne-Marie's done that I love is sometimes I go to work and I have this little handwritten note saying, Ray, I love you and I'm so proud of you. Aww. And I'm like, oh. I love that. It just keeps each day excited. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, you yes. know? And so it's it just remembering to be joyful. Um, on and just to be a, intentional, like, with the little things. Yeah. So on the weekend, you know, we, we, we bought a little projector thing. And, you know, sometimes we'll make homemade popcorn and right. watch a movie or something like yeah. that. Make things exciting. Um, I have several younger sisters, and they come over, and they're, like, always so excited so to hang out with us. Yeah. It, it really makes life so much more joyful because we can just be like, oh, well, I don't know what to do tonight. Right, get or, excited, you yes. know? Yeah. You know, when you have joy, it spreads to everyone else. It does, and, and it's awesome. on the other end, if you're negative, that'll spread to everyone else. Yes. So be intentional, realize that everything mm -hmm. you do has like an impact on your salvation and yeah. all the joy that you bring, all the sacrifices that you make, you'll be rewarded for one day in heaven. And the fourth way to have a joyful marriage is find other Catholic couples that help you grow. Community is so important. It is. Every saint that became a saint didn't do it by themselves. They had a community that helped lift them up. And this is especially important in marriage. 
You know, you always hear mm -hmm. that people that get divorced impact right. marriages that are around them. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, if you have marriages that are on fire for Christ yeah. and trying to grow in holiness, your marriage will also grow. Right. An so example, almost like find mentors, you know? Yes. That yeah. is so important. Mm -hmm. So something we did this past year is we found an awesome Catholic couple. Yeah. They're such a blessing. We've become like best friends. We have. And we did Exodus 90, him and I yeah. together. And, and it then was the so women powerful. did Fiat 90, which is like a women's version of Exodus 90. Not nearly as intense, but <laughs> you know, still sacrifices yes. to be made. <laughs> and we grew so much together. Mm -hmm. So that was a gift yeah. because it's really hard to be Catholic these days, as you yeah. know. And if you're by yourself, the devil's going to convince you that, oh, you're alone. Yeah. But if you have this great community, right. think about it. This conference, there'll be thousands of people there. Because Jason Everett had that community right. and reached out and built this awesome opportunity. Oh, it's incredible. And you, we know as, you know, with people that have a spouse, like there are always things that frustrate us. And, and the way that, you know, and very often it's not, a, you know, it, we, we might make an excuse like, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, I might say to you, it's not a big deal that I do this. But for, for me, I have, a, you know, girlfriends that, that, that are married that can say, Amber, you know, that is a big deal. Like you need to, you need to reconsider that and change that. Yes. Or, or you might have men in your life that'd be like, you know, Ray, this is kind of a big deal and you yeah. need to grow in this way. You know, I saw the way you talk to Anne Marie and that is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just, it's so, it's so important. Not like that happens, but like, but, but that does happen in other married couples and we need to grow and we can help other people grow. And We've actually been able to help like do mediation for a couple and it yeah. was so fruitful, but we learned a lot from it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really a blessing. Like we're all so unique yes. and God has put people in our lives that we can help right. bring closer to heaven and they can mm -hmm. also help bring us closer to heaven. So yes. I would really encourage you to do this. Also, if, if you don't have any in your area mm -hmm. that you can find, Pray for God to bring them into your life. Yes. And if they still don't come into your life, <laughs> look on Instagram. There are so many. Well, just this conference alone, you know, yes. find find a couple that you really like, could, you know, enjoy watching and learn from them and just like, see like, like what are they doing? You know, um, how can I spark my marriage? You know, and because, you know, it's so easy for life to become mundane and just like But when you normal. see the, the joy that comes from some of these marriages, right? Yeah. And, and we're not always on our A games, right? No, so yeah. one day, the people that you're following might be kind of like, ah, oh. and they'll see something that you shared and there be like, go. oh my goodness. So yeah. it's amazing. Like talk about the communion of saints, mm -hmm. right? That we have to look up to and hopefully we can begin to build out on earth. Right. So I hope that you've enjoyed these four tips that they'll benefit your marriage. God love you.